Throughout the history of the United States of America, segregation and racism have been in its framework, originating with the enslavement of Africans. The slave mindset is still present throughout America today. Through the early 20th century and mid 20th century, segregation and racism were prevalent throughout America, but most noticeable throughout the southern state, also known as the Jim Crow states. Throughout these states, many rules were put in place in order to separate blacks and whites from one another. The Jim Crow laws essentially created a new phrase, separate but equal, which reigned in institutions such as public school systems and corporate America. The phrase separate but equal enacts the depths of racism due to the fact that although institutions were separate, they were not in fact equal. Through many numerous court cases and events such as Plessy v. Ferguson and the most known Brown v. the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas, these these two cases did ultimately, in fact, recreate the phrase separate but equal. But there is still inequality throughout America's public school systems today. Overcome the history that Missouri had separate but equal. Matter of fact, 115 years St. Louis had, had um, segregation. Missouri schools were segregated for 115 years. Although slavery had been prohibited in Missouri in 1865, the Missouri legislature maintained separate schools for blacks and whites until 1976. What brought an end to the separate but equal schooling style was Daniel Schlafly's desegregation program. This was implemented to end segregation in schools and mix the races. A busing system was set up where whole black classes from overcrowded black schools would be bused to the white schools. Now, although black and white students were taught in the same school, the black students were still taught in different classrooms from the white students, and lunches were still eaten in different areas. There was little interaction between the black and white students, but there were a few light-skinned blacks who were granted the privilege of integrating with the white students. Although this seems like a rather good idea, it actually created more problems for the few blacks selected to be integrated. They had to deal with problems from both races now. Although this plan had great intentions, it was not executed to its best ability. A large population of African Americans, there were two things going on in the city. There was a real estate issue, I don't know if you're familiar with that, where the real estate was earmarking or, or targeting African, well, we were black at the time, we weren't African American, black people to want certain areas in the city. Right. So they had to buy real estate. If they were going to live, they had to live in certain areas of the city, which created huge populated area of nothing but blacks. So very few blacks lived outside of those areas. So what Shafley's plan was is that we we're going to create a busing situation, which appeared as if he was going to try to desegregate, which in fact he wasn't. What he was really doing was I'm going to, there were two components of this plan. I'm going to allow uh, students that were already enrolled in specific schools to remain where they are. However, he, he created districts, so you had to go to school in the area that you were in district. You're, you were placed in whatever district. What that ended up doing, polarizing the schools. So he ended up with huge areas in the city which were just African American or black. There are huge areas which only white students. However, all of the schools became overcrowded. Every last one of the schools for black kids became overcrowded. So what happened is that they would take whole classrooms of black students and bust them to the white school. You would think we would be integrated, right? No, we had to remain segregated. So our whole black classrooms were placed in areas in the school. We didn't eat in the same cafeteria at the same time. 
We didn't play together in on the play yard. We had separate playgrounds, and this was the, now this is interesting. I am a light-skinned black person, long hair. So I fit a certain characteristic for, for white people at the time. So those light-skinned black kids, we were considered the chosen ones. We were made, forced to play with the white kids at recess as their form of integration. Do you know what that created for us? A nightmare. You know why? Because when we went to, we're forced to go and play with the white kids, what do you think they called us? Nigger. Correct? So we were niggers to the white kids. And then when we came back with our black friends, what do you think they called us? White people, Uncle Tom, etc. Where it's fourth and fifth grade, I don't know if they were sophisticated enough to call us Uncle Tom, but they called us white girls. So what do you think it was like for us? We had conflict with the white people. We had conflict with our own people because we were picked out as kind of, um, I don't know what you want to, a nugget of, of segregation, of integration rather. So that was a very an interesting situation. They, were, they decided we were going to be integrated. So they chose a group of us black students and we were going to participate in the Christmas program. I remember this so well because my part was, I was to sing a partridge in a pear tree. That was my little part of the program. Guess what? We went to all the rehearsals. Our parents weren't even sent invitations to come. How in the world were we little black kids gonna get from North St. Louis, and I was bus to Wilkerson at the time, which was cross Kings Highway, cross on Arsenal Street, which was Arsenal and Kings Highway was like the dividing line in between the black area and the white area. If our parents weren't invited, so I'm all excited and tell my parents, we got this thing. Well, I, my father was, my parents were very um, progressive parents. So of course my dad went up to school and challenged, you know, you know, what are you doing? You, you tell my daughter, she used to participate in the program and yet you don't send me anything inviting me to come. How can my daughter participate? So it was really, it was the city of St. Louis, the state of Missouri. If you look at the history, the whole segregation issue has affected the school uh, system in such way that, um, and of course, you know, prejudices, you know, it, it still exists, but it's not like, it was back then, not at all. We have come a long way. You know, we come a long way, baby. We have come a long way. Look at you guys. <laughs> culture uh, is quite different. So the resources are really put into the schools. The, the children, the kids, it's a different culture. They are not sitting at home playing video games like our Western society. You know, and I'm not saying that's good or bad, but you're talking about the results. Uh, we have a lot of, you all as kids, and my children are 20, this my graduate, and my daughter's 23. Um, they, you all have a lot more outside interest to study and, and thinking about school and doing school where there it's very much about accomplishment in academics and they are the pressure is really important on them. when we look at the united states and all of the urban areas that education is just not the strong component 
it's not a strong component because the hope that used to exist for education, it just isn't there. <laughs> so it could very possibly be true. Again, governmental structures, we are a democracy, and thank God for this democracy. I'm happy that we are a democracy. However, the way other governments uh, push students into the areas educationally is so different. So it's not necessarily an equal type of um, educational system because of the children, again, are tracked into certain career areas. And um, school is taken seriously. And I'm going to deviate from that question and just bring up an issue here. If you look at the population of immigrant students that come into the United States right now, a lot of them do far better than inner city children. And you may say, why? I used to, I, I would pose this question to students in my school. I was the principal of 100% African American population school for 10 years. And I would say to, I would pose this question to them. I wanted them to debate and to discuss this as a, a group. And they would, they would. And oftentimes they would say, Young people come to the United States and the opportunities that they have learned exist here. They felt more driven to get a piece of um, what the American opportunities are. Unfortunately, many of our inner city students do not feel compelled to receive that same kind of opportunity because they don't see it. Because when they live in a blighted area and they see the unemployment of where they are and the number of adult female, male and females, they don't see the hope that the immigrants who come into the United States see. As poverty take over a district, so does educational decline. Capacity problem, as far as intellect is concerned, we're dealing with psychological bondage that comes with poverty. Now, how do you break the psychological bondage of poverty to give more um, educational opportunities for children, that's a million dollar question. That's state money, because that money has to be shared. So the revenue that comes from property taxes in the St. Louis area does not begin to really meet the needs of, to educate children in the city. Unfortunately, the district has gone down, it's gone up since the 60s, maybe. 70s, there's no continuity. They keep changing superintendents, they keep changing leadership, and, and that's important. You've got to give somebody a chance to try to prove themselves. They can't come in for six months and be out the door. A long time ago, decades ago, the Ku Klux Klan got together and said, how can we really hurt the African American children permanently? How can we ruin their lives? And what they created was the public school system. Well, first of all, it's a lie. <laughs> because anybody who knows the history of a public education will go way back to the beginning when America was formed and the whole reason that public education was formed is because they wanted children to learn to read the Bible. <laughs> that is the real beginning. So uh, public education was, um, it started because they wanted children to be able to read and, and to be educated. And as we move from being totally an agrarian society to more industrial, then you needed more technical workers. 
So that is a premise of a very ignorant person. Because public education, if that was true, then the Ladue School District would be as big of a, would be a problem. So that's a little crisp. <laughs> feel race has something to do with the fact that they're in the lowest schools. And is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, I think I would be lying if I didn't say yes. I think out of culture, just culturally, uh, it has become that. And as a, as a white person, a white guy, I, I think there are times, and I have a lot of black friends, I've had a lot of black friends, I, I lived with one in college, I played sports. With, so I, I, as an individual, I don't feel I am prejudiced. If you're asking me if I'm racist, racist, no, I would say no, I'm not. I think culturally, though, it was in our, our it's just the way we were raised in the culture to see, you know, to see a black person, they're black. Okay, you, you notice that. Um, but I think from the education point of view, I think absolutely that St. Louis City is, is still impacted back from the 50s and early 60s. I, I, I think it's an issue. Part of what has happened in this district and in my district was what we call white flight. A few African Americans would move into the neighborhood school and then everybody had to move out. And the African Americans then didn't move. They stayed and then it became more. And when and you say they have to move out, that was a, that was that a was mindset. A mindset. It was a mindset was like, because, yeah, right. we have to move out. Nowadays, I wouldn't think anything of it. You know, I don't, if you're a good neighbor, you're a good neighbor. Who cares what color you are? However, I, I, I think, and this is a, a personal feeling, having gone to a single gender school, uh, I think the voucher system would, would help. I think that would force the public school systems to um, have to make some choices. They would be forced to bring up their game, if you will, especially on the teaching side. Um, and I think that's where a lot of our problems in the public school comes. And, and, and it's it can get to be a real difficult situation. If you can't get kids to behave in the classroom, it's really difficult to get them to be about learn. education. Education is a profession with delayed rewards. You count every child as a potential reward because every child has an opportunity to become a star. You don't discount any child, no matter what you think their level is, you count them as a potential star.